Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters around the world. Welcome to Lifeline Bible Ministry International. And thank you for watching this video. Today, God has a special message for you. Once again, we are beginning a new series, Danger, Jehovah's Witnesses. Whenever you hear Jehovah's Witnesses, you know about people knocking on doors in your homes and, and coming up with some publications and try to share them with you and try to convince people to join them. But why is Jehovah's Witnesses a danger? That's what we're going to talk about today. Why are they a danger? Once again, thank you for watching this video, please. Subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already and help us like this video and share this video to the glory of God. We're going to attempt to answer four essential questions in this series. Question one, is Jehovah's Witness a cult? Question two, who started Jehovah's Witness? Question three, what are their major doctrines? Question four, how to share Christ with a Jehovah's Witness. Okay, let's jump into this. It's gonna be a very short study as our introductory lesson. So we want to figure out what a cult is first. What is a cult? A cult is a group or movement held together by a shared commitment to a charismatic leader or ideology. It has a belief system that has the answers to all of life's questions and answers a special solution, sorry, and offers a special solution to be gained only by following the leader's rules. It requires a high level of commitment from at least some of the members. So what is this definition talking about? So what we talk about a cult, we are simply talking about a group of people who share an allegiance to a particular charismatic leader or an ideology. So every cult, number one, they have a charismatic leader. Number two, they supposedly become successful if they follow the rules the leader gives. In Christian circles, could we have cults? Yes, we can. In Christian circles, who is supposed to be the head? It is Jesus Christ. So if the people are no longer following Jesus, but they're following a human being, then that group of people becomes a cult. Is that, a, is that the same idea with Jehovah's Witnesses? We're going to find out in a minute. So every court has followers after a leader. You're going to find out Jehovah's Witness, they are not following Jesus. The Jesus they talk about, you're going to find out what Jesus are they talking about. It's not the Messiah. So that tells you off the bat that these people are unsaved people. That's number one. If the Jesus they're talking about is not the Jesus the Bible talks about, then it simply means they are not saved. Okay? So the founder of Jehovah's Witness is called Charles Taze Russell. Charles Taze Russell. Who is he? This is a quote from him. So we're just going to read a quote the quote to tell you who Charles Case Russell is. He says, I am very glad to have this particular opportunity of saying a word about some of the things in which we agree with our Masonic friends. Because we are speaking in a building dedicated to masonry and we also are masons. I am a free mason. So Charles Taze Russell 
or Russell is telling us he is a Freemason. Are Freemasons Christians? The answer is no. Why? Because they serve another spirit. They serve another spirit, not Jesus Christ of the Bible, the Messiah. No. So if he is the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses, what spirit did he use to lay the foundation of that particular court? That's what I need for you to understand. So when we talk about danger, it means your soul can be in peril if you follow them. You need to know who they are, who founded them, what do they believe, and how do you share Jesus with them? That is what this series is about. So let's jump into it. Charles T. Russell, he was born February 16, 1852 in a little place called Allegheny in New York State. He died in 1916 in Pampa, Texas, state of Texas here, around Amarillo area. Now, at the place where he was buried, this pyramid was erected there with Masonic symbols all over it. Why? Because he is a 33rd degree free mason. That tells you which spirit is with this man. And which God he worships. Remember something. The Bible talks about another gospel. Another Jesus. Another spirit. Whenever someone is talking about another Jesus, you need to understand there is a spirit behind the person which is not the spirit of God. Of course, it is a serpent. That's what I need for you to understand. So let's look at some major beliefs they have. We're going to attempt just one belief. What do they believe about Jesus? According to Jehovah's Witness or Witnesses, the first thing that Jehovah created is Jesus Christ. The second thing they believe about Jesus is that Jesus Christ is a little God. Not the almighty God, but a little God. Number three thing they believe about Jesus, that Jesus Christ it's the same as Archangel Michael. So according to Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus Christ is an angel. The fourth thing they believe about Jesus is that at the death of Jesus, God disposed of Jesus' physical body because Jesus was raised a spirit creature. God had to materialize a fleshly body for him. These are the four things they believe about Jesus. The question you have to ask yourself, are these what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ? Let's find out. They have a, a, a Bible translation they use, the New World Translation of the Scripture, something like that. We're going to take a look at John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 from their Bible. Okay? The, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. A God. Look at how they spelled God here. Little g. So according to Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus Christ is a little God, not as God the Creator, not as God the Almighty. Verse 2, this one was in the beginning with God. All things came into existence through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. 
Is there any danger? Absolutely, yes. Let's look at the King James Version here. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Are these two Bibles speaking of the same thing? The answer is no. One says the word was God. One says the word was a God. Which one is telling you Jesus Christ, the word, was God? It, of course, it's the King James. But their Bible teaches something different because that is what they believe. And they rewrote that Bible to go with what they believe. So the question you need to ask yourself is, who is Jesus Christ? This is what they are saying. What can you say about Jesus? Are there Bible references to tell you that what they believe is wrong? Absolutely, yes. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 1. We read verse 8, 10 to 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I want you to pay attention here. How many Alpha and Omegas do we have? Only one. How many the beginning and the ending do we have? Only one. So that person who is claiming to be Alpha and Omega, that person is the Almighty. That's what the verse 8 is telling us. So anywhere in the Bible, anyone claiming to be Alpha and Omega, that person is the Almighty. So look at the description carefully. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Which is, which was, and which is to come. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 8 tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That individual is the almighty. Let's read on. Verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pegamos and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and get about the paps with a golden girdle. So verse 10, John, the apostle, said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and he heard behind him a great voice like as of a trumpet. And what did the voice say? I am Alpha and Omega. Wait a minute. Say the first and the last. So that voice speaking to John is the almighty God, according to verse 8. Remember, whoever claims to be Alpha and Omega is the almighty God. So the voice speaking like a trumpet unto John, that voice gave message to John to write unto the churches in Asia. So John verse 12 says, and I turned to see the voice. And when he turned, he saw seven golden candlesticks 
and in the midst of them, one like unto the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. So the voice that spoke like a trumpet is Jesus speaking to John. And Jesus is calling himself Alpha and Omega. So that same voice speaking in verse 8, the Alpha and Omega is the Almighty God. So the verse 13 is telling us the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, is the Almighty God. If you don't know who Jesus is, we are going to find out who he is as the Almighty God. We look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, 13, and 16. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I'm the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So we find here the Alpha and Omega appearing again. And who is the Alpha and Omega according to verse 16? Jesus. So according to chapter 1, verse 8, the Alpha and Omega is the Almighty God telling you and I who Jesus Christ really is. We look at Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, who is our great God and Savior? Jesus. So to claim that Jesus is a little God, the first creation of Jehovah, that is a complete lie. So the creator, the almighty God, the great God, and our Savior is no other but Jesus Christ. Look at Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Say, who are the fathers? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God, blessed forever, amen. Once again, who is Jesus? Christ. He is the overall God, the overall boss, the almighty God, the creator, the savior of mankind is Jesus. So once again, the Bible is telling us here, that Jesus Christ is the overall, the one over all things. God, blessed forever. Is Jesus Christ God? Yes. Is he the almighty God? Yes. So when someone says Jesus is the angel Michael, that person is either their brains cannot work or they, they don't know how to read. Okay. So Jesus Christ is the almighty God who appeared in human flesh to live among us. He is God completely. So we go back to John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Jesus is still speaking to you and me. The word which was in the beginning. The word which was with God. God meaning the Father. The word was God. What does that mean? 
It means the word is a person that existed in the beginning. That word was with the one we know to be called the father. And that word is a person who is God also. So we are talking about a person who is God by called word. So that word existed with God. What does that mean? It means we are talking about more than one person here. We need to remember God is one. God is one. So that means if we have two persons spoken about here, that means the two persons belong to a class of beings. Together is called God, one God. So the same was in the beginning with God, talking about the word which was God. So who made all things? The word. He said all things were made by him. So where did the Jehovah's Witness get the idea that Jesus Christ was the first thing Jehovah made? The answer is not true. We don't know where God came from. That means we don't know where the word came from. He said in the beginning was the word. The word existed in the beginning. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He said all things were made by the word. That means all angels are made by the word. Who is the word? The one who was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. All angels are made by the word. So who made Michael? The word Jesus Christ made Michael. So is Jesus Christ Michael? The answer is no. Who made Satan? Jesus Christ. Who made Lucifer? Je Who made the earth, the sun, galaxies, the cosmos? Jesus Christ. They all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So who is the creator? Jesus Christ. Look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 through 17. Still talking about who Jesus Christ is. Let's read. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Whose blood do we have redemption? Jesus. Can we have redemption in any other blood? No. Any other blood will not have the quality and the capacity to redeem us. So when Roman Catholics teach Mary is a co-redemptress, what kind of nonsense is that one? Does Mary possess the type of blood to redeem us? The answer is no. Okay, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him. and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist let's break this down from verse 15 there is a phrase i want you to understand he says jesus christ is the image of the invisible god i want to explain that part the Bible says no one has seen God at any time. What about Moses? What about the elders of Israel? The Bible says they saw the God of Israel and they lived. What about those visions of Ezekiel? 
What did they see? Meanwhile, the Bible says no one has seen God at any time. According to the book of John chapter 1, it is Jesus Christ who has revealed the Father. So any claim of anyone anywhere, I've seen God, I've seen God. All those claims we have in the Bible and even today, all of that, the God they see is the Son. Why? Because the Son is the image that we see. That's why the Son is called the image of the invisible God. Because God cannot be seen by human beings. Not in our form we have today. We cannot see God. So the God that we see is Jesus who comes for us to see God. The second part of verse 15 I need to explain to you is the firstborn of every creature. The firstborn is a terminology in Hebrew language, meaning the one in charge of. In the Hebrew culture, the firstborn son is the one in charge of every property that the father has. So the one in charge of all things. That's what that reference means. So it says the firstborn of every creature. That means everything God has made, the one in charge of it, the one who owns it, the one who controls it, the one who has a final say about everything that is made, is Jesus. The verse 16 begins. So let me repeat. The meaning of the firstborn means the one in charge of. You are not going to say Jesus Christ, the firstborn of every lion, the firstborn of every dog. No. The firstborn is simply a terminology meaning the one in charge of it, the one who has authority over it, the one who controls it is Jesus. The verse 16 is explaining why Jesus is the one in charge of all things. He says, for by him were all things created. That is why he is the one in charge of all things, because he's the one who made all things. Whether they be uh, things in heaven or that are in earth, everything was made by Jesus whether they are visible to us or they are invisible to us, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. That is why he is the firstborn of every creature. He's the one in charge. 17, and he is before all things and by him all things consist. By Jesus, all things exist and consist. So without the power of Jesus, you will cease to be a human being. Satan will cease to exist. Everything is in place and kept in place by Jesus. Powerful passage. So this is who Jesus is. So when they claim Jesus is the first thing Jehovah created that is a lie. Jesus is Archangel Michael. That is also a lie. I want you to understand that. We're moving on. So Jesus Christ, the maker of all things, including Michael, the Archangel. So he is not Michael. He is not a little God. Jesus Christ is the almighty God. We go to John chapter 20. We're reading 19 to 20. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, that means it was a Sunday, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he has so said, he showed unto them his hands and sighed. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. What is the Bible saying here? This is talking about the resurrection of Jesus. The Jehovah's Witnesses teach 
that God discarded the body of Jesus, destroyed the body of Jesus completely. No. That means Jesus did not resurrect. But we are talking about the resurrection of Jesus. That means the dead body came back to life. But when Jesus came back to life, the body he had is modified in the sense that that body could go through walls. Go here, the doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood in their middle. So how was he able to appear? Still have the scars in his hands and feet. He showed them his side to tell them, hey, this is me. Spirit doesn't have a scar. A spirit doesn't have a scar on them. To tell you, it is his physical body, but the physical body has new characteristics. It could appear and disappear. So the teaching they have that the body of Jesus was completely destroyed and Jesus was a spirit being only. That is not true. You also have an account where Jesus went to the, 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 the seashore and ate fish with the disciples. A spirit will not be able to eat physical food. It has to be having a physical body. So the teaching of the Jehovah's Witness that Jesus Christ that Jesus basically when he resurrected God destroyed his physical body so he basically came back as a spirit that is not what the Bible is teaching it is the physical body which was resurrected but more qualities was added to the physical body that Jesus had so that he can appear, he can disappear. But the body is still physical. He could still eat. You can call it multi-dimensional body. Look at Luke chapter 24, verse 39. He said, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit had no flesh and bones as ye see me have. Look at what the Bible is saying about Jesus. So if the Jehovah's Witness claim Jesus resurrected just as a spirit, once again, either their brains are not working or they cannot read. Is it for a spirit had not flesh and bones as ye see me have? So he appeared unto them physical body, human being. He can appear and disappear, but when he's there, he's a physical human being. So these two passages answers the question for the Jehovah's Witness, that Jesus Christ resurrected as a human being with physical body, with flesh and bones. So Jesus Christ received a resurrected body which is multi-dimensional. It can go through walls and so on. So not just a spirit. He can appear. You touch him. Physical body that can be touched. He could eat and so on. So he received a resurrected body which is multi-dimensional, which was flesh and still a spirit. Not simply a spirit but when he shows up, he has physical body. When he appears somewhere, you see his physical body. Okay, we're going to end this short lesson with our pop quiz. Very popular pop quiz. Everybody talking about it. Question one, who made Archangel Michael? Question two, who created all things? Question three, and by whom? All things consist. Question three, who is Jesus Christ? Question four, what type of body did Jesus have after the resurrection? Question five, why should you share Jesus to a Jehovah's Witness? I'm going to give you two minutes. 
to answer these five questions. Two minutes, start. Okay, our two minutes is up. Question one, who made Archangel Michael? Answer, Jesus Christ. Question two, who created all things and by whom all things consist? Answer, Jesus Christ. Question three, who is Jesus Christ? Answer, the almighty God who became a man and dwelt among us. Question four, what type of body did Jesus have after the resurrection? A multidimensional body, which is both flesh and spirit. Question five, why should you share Christ to a Jehovah's Witness? Answer, they are lost without the savior, Jesus Christ. If they believe that Jesus is an angel, angels are not savior, angels do not save. The human soul, they cannot do that. So that means they are completely lost. So we have to share Jesus Christ with them, the true Messiah. We have to share him with them so they can be saved. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Please do us a favor, help us. Share this video with your friends. God richly bless you. We shall see you again very soon.